everybody, welcome back to the Catting Little Book Corner. My name is Acacia. Today we're going to be doing a top five video. This top five video is going to be revolving around nasty women of literature. This term was coined by Mr. Donald Trump when he called Secretary Clinton a nasty woman in the last debate. It has started a chain reaction in the internet to incite feminists to take back the term. Now, I want to do the top five women from literature that I find to be nasty women, and I want to really reclaim that term here on this channel. I found a channel, I can't remember the title of it, and I'm actually gonna go watch more of her videos because I'm curious now. She did a video talking about literature, um, nasty women, and I'm gonna link the video down below because I found it really cool. So that's what inspired this. If you would like to see nasty women's memoirs or me talk about nasty women who are authors, let me know in the comments below and I will be happy to oblige. First and foremost, we have Little Women. This is is not really my all-time favorite book. I enjoyed reading it with my family as a child. My mom read it out loud to me and my sister, but the character that really inspired me, there were two of them. One was Amy, who while a very, very sweet and kind and wonderful woman, she is not what a lot of people would classify as a nasty woman, though she is in her own right. The nasty woman that really stands out in this book is Jo. Jo goes after what she wants. She is a strong, hardcore feminist who really has her own beliefs, her own values, and she goes after them without any apologies. She is a writer and an intelligent woman who really, really believes in herself and her family and friends. Next we have The Natural History of Dragons. This is the memoir of Lady Trent. This is a fictional fantasy world where dragons really exist. Lady Trent is a married woman in the Victorian era, but she, in spite of her marriage and deciding to go after that type of relationship as well, she is really, really determined to also find out more about dragons and learn about the culture of dragons. She ends up going on a little expedition with her husband and another and and really, really diving into that kind of research and talking about dragons and learning about dragons, which in those days was kind of frowned upon. So she is a nasty woman because she goes after what she wants and she is super intelligent. I seem to think that women who are nasty are definitely intelligent. That seems to go with my... My logic. This woman though, while she is intelligent, she's a different type of a nasty woman. She is a mentally strong nasty woman. This is Rome. I'm talking about the mother from Rome. Even though we all kind of follow the little boy's perspective and we really learn from him everything we can, there's a lot that goes into the fact that the mother maintains this ideal of her child's life and how she wants it to be executed. She is a woman who is trapped in a kidnapping and she has been kept captive for years and she gave birth while in captive to this little boy. This little boy who is telling the story about him and his mother. Now the mother has terrible things happening to her all the time continuously even while she's still in captive and he's been born and it's happening right in front of him but she maintains mental stability she holds strong she continues to live and she makes sure that her child is kept safe from the environment that he is in as much as possible she also begins to think and learn about how much she really needs to get him out of there and she also teaches him that the world is a good place despite what has happened to her and her history that is a strong kick-ass woman. Next, we have the butcher's hook. The butcher's hook is something that, you know what? I really don't talk about very much, but Anne is a kick-ass. <laughs> she is a very strong-willed woman as well. She is extremely intelligent, and she really wants to learn and become a more well-rounded person in society. But when she is set up for an arranged marriage, she ends up falling in love with the butcher and continuing to go back and forth from her world to the butcher world and she oh things get a little grimy in this book but it's totally well worth the read and absolutely lovely I think that Anne is somebody who really goes after what she wants she's not afraid of the fact that she is going against her family's wishes and she's not afraid to learn more and to try and educate herself last but not least this one I want to kind of take a twist most people would say Hermione Granger. I agree. But Re Professor McGonagall, can we just talk about Professor McGonagall for a second? Professor McGonagall is 
not someone to be trifled with. This woman has stood by Dumbledore. She is his confidant. She is smart. She is witty. She is strong. She is really determined. She's a really well-rounded witch. And she's so, so determined to give her children in the school the best education that she can. When Umbridge comes in, she manages to try and stand up to her. She is a very, very powerful witch. And she is very, very open to making sure that these children have the best and safest experience that they can. When things start to go astray, she tries so hard <laughs> to help these kids continue to have a normal life. In several of the situations where Harry is being put into danger, she even stands up and says, he's just a boy. You need to like, let this kid be a child. Come on. She stands up to people who are still her friends and she is just so intelligent. I love Professor McGonagall. Love her. All right, guys, that is my top five nasty women of literature. Anyone who wants to join in, you're more than welcome. And again, any requests, let me know down in the low, and I will talk to you guys soon.